Hello everyone and welcome to the Automation Zone. Today we are going to continue the topic of synchronization and start with the last subtopic of the day called as the Fluent Weight. We are going to use the exact same website that we have used in our last session, which is this one right here. The link of this website will be given in the description below. Now we are going to perform a simple task that is clicking on this button and verifying if the message below is seen or not. Now the way we are going to use verification is simply going ahead and clicking on this button uh, on this message right here. If this message is visible, it will show no errors. If it is invisible, it will show some or the other error. Perfect. Now let us go back to our code, which is this right here. The, the code is pretty simple. It is navigating to the website URL and we have got um, two X paths right here. The first X path is off the button, this one right here. And the second website, uh, second X path, X path two is off the message right here. And what we're doing is we are clicking on the button and then we are going to go ahead and click on the message. Note that the message took some time to appear. Therefore, it'll throw you an error saying that message is not appeared. So you'll have to wait for some time. Let me go ahead and run this and show you what happens. So proceed. Here we go. The website is loaded. It is going ahead and clicking on the button. But as you can see, the message is not loaded and now the message is loaded. However, you will be getting an error which states that uh, the element is not interactable because it was invisible, of course. So now we are going to solve this error with the help of fluent weight. Let us now go ahead and write the code for fluent weight. So in our code, we need to first go ahead and uh, click on the button. That's good. However, clicking on the text will not work because that has to be done with the help of the fluent weight. It takes some time. So delete that piece of code. We'll write the fluent weight code right here. The code for fluent weight is a bit complex. So the way I do it is with the help of the documentation because I rarely use it. So how to use the documentation of Selenium? Simply type in fluent, F-L-U-E-N-T, control and space. You'll be getting this stuff right here. Select the fluent weight from selenium.support.ui and on the right hand side, you'll be getting the sample usage. Okay. Now the sample usage is also present for almost all of the classes in Selenium. So you can just go ahead and uh, if you do not know how to use something, you can open the sample usage, copy that piece of code and modify it based on your requirement. And we are going to do just that. So copy this, go ahead and paste it right here. We do not need the comments. So remove the comments. And there are various imports right here. So let us go ahead and import this manually. Why manually? Because sometimes uh, some classes are present in two places, such as Selenium and, and Java. So you need to import it from the right location or you might have a bit of a mess. So weight is from Selenium, fluent weight is from Selenium, duration is from Java, web element is from Selenium, function is from Java. I guess those are all the imports. Yeah, and this no such element exception is from Selenium. Here we go. So now that's done. Let, let me now go ahead and explain this piece of code. The way I like to do is to break up this entire function into two parts. This is the first part, which is settings for me. And the second part is implementation. The settings has got three sections. The first one is timeout, polling, and then ignoring. So what do you mean by timeout? So if you're performing a particular action, for example, clicking on a particular button, how long do you want to perform that action? You want to perform it for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, one hour. How long are you going to perform that action until you say, okay, we can't perform it anymore and it's a failure. So duration dot of seconds. You can change this to anything. You can change this to um, maybe even see over here days hours milliseconds minutes whatever for now let us leave it to seconds itself and instead of 30 um, i would like to have it as 10 i guess 10 is enough so i'm going to perform some action till 10 seconds and if the action still fails it's a failure perfect next is polling polling means um, at what interval are you going to perform that particular action so for example if i say the polling is one second so I'm going to perform the clicking action now. If it fails, I'll perform it after one second and then one second. And I'm going to keep performing this until it reaches a maximum of 
10 seconds. So this here would be the maximum time. This here would be the um, interval. Correct. So how uh, was the interval between which I going to keep performing that action. And last one is ignoring. So this is going to specify which issues or which exceptions do you want to ignore. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. Now let us come back to our next section which is the implementation. Now there are two ways to implement this. I would not prefer to implement it like this. This is a bit, not bit, this is very complex. The way I like to implement this is um, how we had performed the earlier explicit weight implementation and that would be using the weight this is the, the weight object use that weight dot until perfect and then you can go ahead and use the or exceptions or exceptions at what was that um, conditions no until expected conditions here we go expected conditions dot and then uh, in my scenario the expected condition is till the element is clickable so dot element to be clickable by locator by x path and minus the x path number two dot click simple but the difference here is instead of going ahead with the default parameters of the weight class we have gone ahead and changed those default parameters to these parameters right here where we have set the maximum duration here is 10 seconds the polling is every one second and we are going to ignore this exception only right click on this let's run as java application and let's see what happens Here we go. If I come over here, I do not see any kind of exception. So it worked pretty fine. There was no exception and there were no errors. Now let us perform the exact same thing but the fluent weight way. So let me comment of this or let me just delete this because this is not important. And let me uncomment this part right here. So guys, in this next section, the only line which is important is this one right here. Let me just explain the other two lines in short so that it might help you in your interviews. So the first line, web element foo, basically states that whenever you go ahead and execute your fluent weight, it is going to return for you a web element which is going to be stored in this element right here called as foo. So this object, the name of the object can be changed. It doesn't need to be foo. You can keep it as obj or you can keep it foo if you want. No problem. The next part is wait until, which is same as before. However, you don't have your expected conditions over here, but you are going to create your own expected conditions with the help of the your, um, your function interface. This here would be your input and this here would be your output. This is a class in Java. So web driver is your input. From where web driver is coming, it's coming from right here. The driver here is passed over here, and this here would be passed to your next line. Your next line is this thing right here, which is you're creating your function. Your function accepts a web driver driver, which is this one right here. It comes from there. And it returns a web element. So the return type here is web element. You can't change any parameters over here, let's leave it as it is. It shouldn't matter what you should change is this this is not required now note that you will need to return a web element whether you use it or do not use it that's irrelevant however you need to return a web element otherwise it'll throw an error like this thing right here so the code we are going to write here would be to go ahead and click on this element right here okay so how we do that we're going to do driver dot find element by x path and then your x path number two what we are going to do right here is if i just perform dot click then that means that uh, i'm not able to return a web element and that will cause a problem 
So what I'll do here is I'm going to save the web element right here in an object web web element elem is equal to this perfect element dot click and then I'm going to do return elem now in order to understand if the code is working fine or not working fine let me do also a few other things let me perform a system output over here it states that finding the element and if it has clicked successfully it means the element is found right because there are no exceptions so let me type here element found a very simple code correct now that's done let me go ahead and execute this so right click run has a java application proceed here we go the message is seen but has the code worked so if you look over here the code has not worked and this is something which was expected so if you look at the the console clearly you will see finding the element so it reached this part of the code finding the element however there was an exception which was raised called as element not interactable exception and then the entire thing failed why did it fail it had to run 10 times uh, 10 times right or 11 times before failure but it didn't work like that because this exception element dot interactable exception was not there in the list what we had in the list we had just no uh, no such exception no such element exception in the list so what you have to do is if you want to ignore any extra exception just go ahead and add that the way to add that is simply type ignoring again remove this quotation from here a colon from here and just go ahead and add that class to your classes like this and import this from selenium here we go save it and run it again and this time your <coughs> and this time your code will work here we go now if I go ahead and open my console you will be able to see finding the element once finding the element twice three times four times and at the fifth try the element was found perfect so guys in this session I've gone ahead and used a very simple scenario so that is easier for you guys to understand how fluent weight actually works in reality fluent weight would be used to create much more complex functions for using a simple function like this you can just go ahead and use your existing explicit and implicit weight functions and that will work just fine just fine anyways uh, if you have any more questions on your um, on your fluent weight topic you can go ahead and comment below and I will help you out on the same the link to the previous topic of implicit and explicit weight I will be giving in the description below as well if you like my series uh, do show your support by liking and sharing this video and subscribing to my channel thank you guys for watching